Amy Dash coming up in a couple minutes. Fox Sports Radio, Fox Sports One, uh, legal analyst extraordinaire. She's got a website, Legal Eagles. Uh, she's been breaking a lot of news this week on Deshaun Watson. We're going to check in with her coming up on what's going on with Trevor Bauer. As a big headline late last night, the temporary restraining order against Bauer was dissolved after an L.A. Superior Court judge ruled against a woman's request for a permanent restraining order on Thursday. Uh, Bauer, who, of course, has not been pitching for the Dodgers the past few weeks, Weeks, uh, after he has uh, been investigated for charges that he injured a woman during a, a course of two sexual encounters. This was a, a, a trial right now that just went on about the restraining order. The woman wanted a restraining order against him, and the judge, Diana Gould-Saltman, said that uh, her injuries that we have you know, heard about pictures and seen photos the, the uh, were not are horrific. The, Yes, I mean, they're awful. I mean, you look at them and go, oh, my goodness. Uh, the, the injuries were not the result of anything she verbally objected to before or during the encounter. So, you know, on, on the surface, you look and say, okay, well, this is, a, you know, if you're talking about what's good and bad news going on with this trial, with this situation, it's a good day for Trevor Bauer because, you know, getting into the investigation, hey, here's precedent by a judge that says the injuries weren't the result of anything she didn't object to. Now, this doesn't mean that the police case or the in investigation by Major League Baseball is going away. Now it's into the Pasadena police and MLB as this unfolds. But Rob, I see this and, 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 I, and I go, you know, no matter how this turns out, let, let's just say it turns out where, where it gets dismissed. There's two outcomes, right? Either, uh, you know, she wins or he wins. And let's just say it comes out that he wins. I, I, there's no way he can go back to the Dodgers. I mean, they, they took his nameplate down, his locker down, and and even Remember even when he it comes was out, have hey, a bobblehead day. Remember that they canceled that weeks ago. Yeah, I, I I don't. There's no way he can go back, and it's going to get real sticky about his future in baseball because look, the Dodgers have already moved on, right? He's, there's been reports that hey, they don't want him back in the clubhouse, and I get that because no matter what. You know this about this guy, because this is not something that Trevor Bauer says, I didn't do it. No, I did this, but she said it was okay. And it's like, whoa, there, there's somebody you know that's capable of stuff like that. Can you really have them back in your locker room? Can you really say, hey, this guy's my teammate? I mean, even if he winds up getting reinstated, I can't believe the Dodgers bring him back. And it's now it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a battle of is he going to where is he going to play? Is he going to play again this year? Will the Dodgers trade him? Will the team take him? What's it going to be for the money they owe him? Because they owe him over a hundred million dollars for this contract. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you from the standpoint. I think his days with the Dodgers are over. I do not believe that no matter what the outcome is, that they'll want him back. And we've seen some players. Uh, I was at the All-Star game in Denver. They didn't even want to mention him, you know, or talk about him. So it seems as if they're detached. And, and this is what people have to understand. You know, there's a, there's a, a, a conduct code and, you know, uh, that supersedes any legal thing, Jason, criminal or civil, you know, like these leagues, you sign these things when you sign these major league contracts. And... They, they can look at it, and they don't need a conviction. We've seen it in the, in the NFL and some other leagues, right, where you can be punished even though you didn't, there were no charges filed against you or, 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 there, or there was no conviction. They can still uh, act against you because they don't feel that it fits their character and, and what their, their code of conduct that they're looking for for people who work in their league. I don't think his career would be totally over because there's always somebody who's willing to give somebody a second chance. But this reminds me of Donald Sterling. And what I mean by this is Donald Sterling, if you remember, Jason, was on a private conversation that was taped, that was taped right? Mm -hmm. But once, once the, the cat was out of the bag and people heard for themselves and and him using the N-word and calling Magic Johnson and whatnot, once you heard that, you can't unhear it, okay? And then Donald Sterling was forced to sell. He made out like a bandit. He got $2 billion, but he was forced out. He couldn't be an owner anymore, right? Despite never breaking any laws. Donald Sterling didn't break any laws. He wasn't handcuffed. He wasn't arrested, right? He didn't do anything that would have gotten him in trouble legally, but the league still acted against him, and that's what I think with Trevor Bauer. Once we now know 
how he gets down out off the field and behind closed doors, it's whether or not people can accept that or feel good about this guy being a teammate. And that's why I don't believe the Dodgers and their organization, if there's one franchise that's family-friendly and about their tradition and history and class, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers. So I don't think he fits in with what they sell. Does that mean he can't go somewhere else a year from now? He won't pitch this year. Six weeks left, five weeks left to the season. So it'll be about next year and whether or not somebody will give him an opportunity. Joining us now on the hotline for more on this, the official legal analyst here at Fox Sports Radio, CBS Sports Odyssey. She is a wife and a mother and has all kinds of big opinions on this story. Her website is leagueofjustice.com. Amy Dash joins us. She's on Twitter at Amy Dash TV. Amy, good morning. What's happening? Good morning, Amy. Good, mo- good morning, guys. Are no, we getting I really, you? I really, really agree with what Rob just said. I think that was an excellent analysis and opinion. Oh, wow. thank you, Amy. I wow. appreciate Rob, that. Nice All job. right, I'm done for the night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you went from a shoe salesman a few minutes ago, and now it's all legal advice you're giving. Well, you out know here. what? This Pretty is what happens show. when this is what happens, Amy. When you watch Perry Mason every day for 50 years, because I'm still watching <laughs> Perry Mason. All right. Listen, I need contributors over at LeagueOfJustice.com. So anytime you want to hop on there and write your opinion, please let me know. All right. You I'm, have wow, valuable that, insight like, into this stuff. And now you got a new job. I know. Wow, you know I need amazing. another job, Jason, right? I do. <laughs> that's true. You're not busy enough. <laughs> All right, Amy, so, so take us through here. We, we saw the results of what happened yesterday with, with Trevor Bauer. Uh, what's your big takeaway from the restraining order uh, being lifted against him? Well, I think it was absolutely appropriate thing to do from a legal perspective because in order to get a restraining order, you have to have a close relationship with the person that, that you're trying to get it against. So that has to be a spouse or you have to be dating them or it has to be a family member. These people had sex on two occasions. So really, it wasn't an appropriate thing to do unless you could show that there was a longstanding relationship. And think about it. When you're trying to get a restraining order, you're showing that somebody's pursuing or stalking you for a while. So she just wasn't able to meet that burden of proof that there was actually a dating relationship and that he was a threat to her. And if you looked at the text messages of after everything occurred, you would see that Bauer was calling her, but he was just asking, you know, how she was doing. He was trying to bring her groceries and do other things. Now, whether it was genuine or not, or he was just trying to do damage control, that's another story. But there was no showing up at her residence, harassing her, threatening her. So I think that was the right decision. Where it comes into play for him is that there was an additional judicial opinion that said that the judge did not find that he did anything that she objected to. Now, not objecting to something is not the same as consenting to it, but that would still be in his favor, and he can now use that if there were to be a subsequent criminal case. Now, now this is the thing that I, I, I disagree with the judge. If she was unconscious during this, how in the world could she object if she was already passed out? And I okay, think so you, you in, need a law in, degree. In, yes, help you me. Would, you would win that argument. No, I mean, you're thinking like a lawyer now. Okay. You're now arguing against what the judge is saying, and you're, you're making an argument for your stance. You're saying you're wrong, and you were wrong because she was unconscious, and you can't consent when you're unconscious. Unconscious, right. And I should say, you're exactly right. Like, if I were on the jury, I would agree with you over the judge. So, Amy, as this as this now goes forward, was this a, a was this a, if, if you talk about good and bad days for for either side, right? And that's kind of how, how how we do it here. It was yesterday it seemed like it was a good day for Trevor Bauer with this. Does this have any application in in either baseball's investigation or in the Pasadena police investigation? I think it does more so in the Pasadena police investigation because judicial opinions carry a lot of weight. I think with MLB. As Rob was saying, you know, they are very strict with this kind of stuff, and they've established a standard of zero tolerance, very different from the NFL. So I think the optics of it are really important here, and the fact that, like Rob said, there are pictures, it's very damaging to him. And even though if there were not pictures, I think he would be playing because he was pretty much, he wasn't exonerated from, you know, doing anything in a criminal court. 
but the hear but not getting the restraining order, it means that there's an investigation going on, but there's been no determination. So technically, he's innocent until proven guilty, and he hasn't been charged with anything. So if there were no pictures, there were no video, um, then uh, if he were another player, maybe he'd be allowed to get back on the field and play. But because of those pictures, I think the optics are really challenging for the MLB. And, Amy, we saw this in the NFL with Ray Rice. If you remember, Ray Rice got a two-game suspension. The NFL gave that penalty without seeing the video. Somehow, some way, they claimed they couldn't get a video, and it was at a casino. So, you know, other than the bathroom, everything is covered by cameras. And they gave him a two-game suspension. The video comes out, and obviously he was at the end of his career, so it wasn't like he was a big star in the league at that time. But he never played again, you know, because people couldn't unsee that video. And that's why I think Trevor Bauer is damaged from those pictures. I would agree with you. I think it's a little bit of a different situation because it was a rough sex context. And so she was asking for certain things. But we know her argument is that she says she was not asking to be you know, essentially punched or, or beaten up or anything like that to that extent that she wanted light choking and slapping. So it's a little trickier because you have people on the other side of it feeling sympathetic for him. You know, some don't, some do, because they say, well, if she was asking for certain things, how is he supposed to know how far he's going to take it? And then other people argue, well, he should know where the line is and not cross it. Amy Dash, our guest here on Fox Sports Radio, Jason Smith, Rob Parker. All right, Amy, really quick, you know, you had a lot of stuff this week on the Deshaun Watson case. You had an interview with Tony Busby uh, representing uh, the women who are claiming that he had many 22 cases of sexual misconduct. Uh, the story this week goes, hey, that one person, one of them is being investigated for trying to extort Deshaun Watson. Where, where do things stand with this right now? Well, that's just an allegation from Deshaun Watson's attorney. The FBI hasn't said anything. But what we know is that Deshaun Watson's attorney confirmed what Tony Busby said, that, yes, the FBI is investigating the allegations against Watson. He came back and he said, when we were initially contacted back in April by the FBI and I let Watson be interviewed by them, it was because they told us they were investigating one of Busby's clients for trying to extort Watson. And so when I went back to Busby, he was actually hysterically laughing. And he said, absolutely not true. To my knowledge, none of my clients are being investigated and they're victims. However, we don't know whether the FBI is, in fact, looking at some of his clients as well as Watson, because the FBI has a policy. They will never either confirm or deny that there's even an investigation. So really, anything could be happening at this point. She's on Twitter at Amy Dash TV. That is at Amy Dash TV. Official legal analyst here at Fox Sports Radio, CBS Sports Radio as well. Odyssey, two time Emmy winner. And you know, Rob, I think, if I'm, because I don't know what's happened, but I think Amy's softball team is still undefeated in her league that she's playing in in New York. Is that true, Amy? I, I, yes, I've been rallying for Jason to be able to come do play by play for these games because they're more exciting than the Yankees or the Mets. But I'm oh, a New wow. Yorker, so. Um, but, but we're undefeated, and what's most crushing about it, we actually had a game on Wednesday, and we blew the team out of the water. But I'm not going to be there next week for the championship game. Wow. I'm going away with my family, and I am devastated about that. But we better win. A- Amy, where do you guys play? Where do you play? We play at, in New York. Listen, I, listen, if I give out the address, Rob, okay, I'm going to have fans lined up. Oh, okay. I, I, you know People what? aren't going to be able to get parking spots who actually play for the team. Who actually play. Because I <laughs> right. used to play in the New York Press Softball League in Central Park uh, oh, wow. back in the 80s. Yes, it was great. And uh, we played the Times and the Post. Everybody had teams. It was awesome. Uh, that was one of, my, one of my shining moments was playing in the New York Press Softball League. So I thought you guys might play in Central Park. Isn't it a lot of fun, though, to be able to get out there? And I mean, listen, we're, we're, we're older. We're not in our 20s anymore. I'll say that much. I'm not going to reveal how old we are. But <laughs> there's a lot of injuries now because yes. people have the mindset that they're, like, still 12, 15 years old. And so uh, there was one girl who tried to slide into third, and she broke her leg just from oh. sliding. So My it's like goodness. every week we've got three, four people on the sidelines because we all have that fighting spirit. But just physically, we can't do it anymore. Mm. No doubt. Amy, thank you. 
Amy, thanks a lot. I'm sorry you're going to miss the championship game, but I'm sure they'll do, they'll do fine. All right. Thanks, guys. Have or, a great or, day. or you lose and you just say, I wasn't there, and, and, and really we would have won if I was there. So you have bo- both I, arguments are ready. I can't take that kind of credit. I can. I, yes. I'm, I'd say I'm like middle tier of, of the caliber of players that we have. Okay. Well, at least you're still getting out there. That sounds good. Have a great vacation, Amy. Thanks, guys. Take care. All right, always great stuff from Amy Dash. Rob, when you played, wasn't Connie Mack the manager of your team? When you uh, played yes, Connie <laughs> Mack in a suit, full suit. And in my day, if somebody broke their leg, they just used that part of the leg for third base. You know what oh, I mean? Like, <laughs> if you can't move, just stand there. We'll tag you as we go by third base, right? That's how it is. We'll just do that.